Good morning, folks. Welcome to another chip break. I hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas. Uh, this is my second day back in the shop. I was up in Massachusetts, had a great time with my wife's family, uh, had the chance to tour the Starrett factory. We filmed. I'm hoping that they're going to approve the video and let us release it because it was so cool. Um, and I actually was really inspired. I didn't actually own um, a last word. It was one of the most iconic products of theirs that I don't own. I just picked up on, one up on eBay. Um, a fan had sent in this, uh, I don't even know what it's called actually. Oh, that's actually not Starrett. That's a, oh yeah, it is. Sorry, that's funny. Why does it say Sunnen? Um, anyways, uh, I would love to be able to share that footage with you guys. Um, moving on though, January 18th, Fusion 360, our shop. Um, Autodesk is putting on this event. It's like really all of their thing. It just happens to be at our shop. Uh, we're going to just do a, a Fusion 360 sort of morning thing. They don't have the registration link yet, so I can't put that in the comments, but um, look for it soon and just mark your calendars. So Zanesville, Ohio, uh, Wednesday, Jan January 18th, I think about 8.30 in the morning until noon. Come see Fusion 360, come learn, come talk to the Autodesk team. A lot of people are coming in from the Midwest Autodesk office and even actually from California. So. I'm really excited. We're gonna have the machines running, a chance to see the shop again. We also separately have already announced our open house. So if you wanna register for our open house, it's Saturday, May 6th. Make sure I don't get that date wrong. May 6th, yep. You can RSVP for that, which is super exciting. Um, okay, 2017, super excited. One of the things I'm doing is trying to get stuff off my plate. I've been struggling, for lack of a better word, to stop being a bootstrap entrepreneur, which I was for seven or eight years. I've started four businesses and they've all been bootstrappers. Most of the time I ran those businesses while I had a uh, day job. I'm just very conservative. Um, one of the things we've done, we've got, got uh, Shipwire going, uh, which I can't show you the screen because it's got, right here, yeah, it's a customer information on it, but, uh, or ShipStation, I should say. That has been great for printing out orders and labels. Um, the next thing that we've done is we've moved our uh, payroll over to, and I, I've spent a fair amount of time researching this, uh, Gusto. So it's an online website, pretty inexpensive. And what I like about Gusto is they'll handle all of my payroll taxes, city, state, and federal. In withholdings, they'll handle our benefits. And they tie in with a, another website called Deputy, which lets me use an iPad for folks to punch in and out. Because to me, time cards are silly. To Someone has to process the time cards. So redundant amount of information. Um, so everyone can, you know, hours now be easily tricked. They'll be automatically moved from deputy to gusto, knock on wood, and payroll will be automatically calculated. Uh, all the taxes will be paid and it'll be direct deposited. What a change. Right now, every two weeks, I manually do it all myself in Excel. Um, and calculate all the taxes. I write checks. Really excited for that. Um, I got a new tripod, like my little Christmas gift to myself. Um, if you want a tripod like this or you want to support our channel, there's a link to it in the product description. It doesn't cost you a dime and we get a small cut. Um, but it's a pretty nice tripod. It goes up high, which I wanted to have a good angle with. Um, so, so sometimes I want to start to shoot down and it's got this really cool way to grip it, reset it, and it's, boy, um, and it looks wobbly, but I'll tell you, it's, it's much more rigid. Um, pretty, pretty darn happy with that. Got some new stuff in from Maritool, still, uh, still experimenting and learning. We're mostly going with um, ER32s. That way I can keep uh, the consistency on, on just all our indexing or all of our collets. Before I left, I took all the vices off the haws and um, cleaned the table, cleaned the vices. I wanna get a better, I'm using WD-40 for now, but I wanna get, I'm gonna do some Starrett M1 as a rust inhibitor to, um, um, to go between the vices and the table so I don't have rust over long term. But I'll tell you, you know what I spent doing like an hour or two last night was tramming these in because we're going to have four orange vices. Um, I've only got three right now. Fourth one's on its way. But I want them to all be, and maybe this is a crazy hurdle, but I want them to all be obviously trammed in to the machine, but also to each other. And that's not a small feat to do because I really want it pretty darn perfect. And these two, uh, this one's perfect. And this one is within about um, half a thou um, to the other one, which is which is pretty darn good. Um, but I want it good. So 
I got to finish doing that. I'll let you guys know how it goes. I, I, it really, you know, you can clamp a bar and one across to the other and that'll get you really close, but the devil is in the details. Um, and it was also figuring out how to space them and keep the uh, tool setter back there okay. So I, I've got a little bit more to the left. Um, right now I am using, if you can see uh, right down in there, and it's hard to tell. Um, here you go. I'm clamping directly through to a T-nut. Uh, I'm gonna make some different T-nuts that'll let me, because right now the problem is I actually want that location um, about a half an inch that way, but that puts me over a spot where I can't use a traditional T-nut. So I'm gonna make some longer T-nuts myself and that'll let me move these a little, but for now I need to get rocking and rolling and get this machine back up and cranking out some parts. Um, was really honored to be on the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast. The episode aired the day after Christmas. Link, uh, I don't think I can do a card, so link in the video description. And then, funny enough, uh, Roy, who is one of the hosts, uh, awesome guy, actually was coincidentally up here in Ohio from Florida and asked if he could swing by, and I said, absolutely. So we spent some time TIG welding, and uh, I kind of put him on the spot. You know, this is uh, you know not his machine, not his setup, not anything, but. He laid down that bead on kind of a first try, and I gotta tell you, it's pretty, really cool. You can see my horrendous attempts. No filler rod, just just laying down uh, with the tungsten. But guy really knows his stuff. Uh, he was nice enough to give me one of Jody's um, gas. I'm gonna get this wrong. Gas shield kits. Here we go. Weldmonger.com. There's the info. Gas lens. That's what it is. Um, so thank you to the folks at Welding Tips and Tricks. Um, and if you guys want to check out that podcast episode we kind of talk about how we got started and went into some stuff that we usually don't go into actually on our youtube channel so definitely check that out there's some material coming in for some stuff you're going to see from us soon um, otherwise oh two more things i wanted to share uh, i'm we have really hard water here so i've got to get an ro system built for the coolant system for the haas because what happens is your water's you know, hard, and then as the water evaporates, the minerals don't. So as you top up, it gets harder and harder and harder. Uh, harder meaning mineral content. So RO system is an easy way to fix it. This is what we're going with. Um, I've got to get, the RO system puts out a relatively small amount of water, so I've got to have it go into a holding tub and then have it come into the system. It's not gonna stay here. It's gonna get moved back over here to the wall. Um, knock on wood, it should work, but that's kind of something I'm getting rigged up here. And then lastly, in a few weeks, I'm taking this scraping class, and um, Jonathan over at Core Print Patterns, I think, link in, his, in the video description to his Instagram, um, helped us make these cast iron, uh, these are going to be 24-inch parallels, and he, he's a casting guy, he knows what he's doing, so he did some really cool analysis on the patterns for, um, not FEA, but making sure that basically this is going to hold up well, even relative to gravity. So the goal, as a guy who's never scraped before, we'll do this on film. I'm gonna go deck these off in the bridge port just to face them down. And then uh, we will take them down to Georgia to Keith Rucker's shop. And it's a Richard King, who's pretty famous in the scraping world class. And uh, I got three because I'll probably take two and maybe I'll save one for a project later. Um, and you know, now is the time to get them since we did a run of castings. Um, and my goal is to scrape them in, and I'll have an awesome 24-inch parallel. So that's what I'm excited to do. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit stressed. I think part of it is just because I was away, which was nice to take time off. A little bit of a head cold. Um, I got a lot of work I got to get done. Some products I got to make, a couple job shop jobs to run, uh, some videos to film. So I, I like stress. I've always kind of thrived on a, a certain amount of it, but I also try to keep it conscious and not get overworked uh, and all that. So. Folks, thanks for watching. Have a very happy new year. Take care. See you soon.